Okay, wow, what a day, huh? And we're going to keep our fingers crossed that Lady Justice can make it. She's having some very difficult issues with her internet, and I know some other people have. As a matter of fact, I have been having some issues also. So um, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see if we can get this done tonight. We really wanted to do just kind of a Independence Day show. Um, obviously, the 4th of July is on Saturday, but July 2nd is a big day, and, and Lady Justice was going to talk about that. And hopefully, if she can join us, uh, we'll be able to we'll do that, and maybe some people will get educated on that difference in dates. Um, just one announcement I want to make, I think, I'm not, and I should have checked, but I didn't before we came on. Our retail store, I think, is being, is getting caught up, if not completely caught up. I think we're caught up on orders. We had a, we had sort of a delay, some back orders in May, and they've been working their Our vendor has been working their way through that process. And so I do believe we are caught up. And if we're not, we're, we're pretty close. So, um, we do apologize for any delays there in the in the shipment. It was sort of out of our control, but the COVID thing kind of hit um, hit us all up and down the line in the uh, supply chain. So hopefully that's been addressed and everybody's received their their product and and they're good to go. Okay, um, one thing I want to I know people are going to want to know some intel. I really don't have a whole lot other than to say that we. Our, our teams are getting ready to travel. They may have gone today. I don't know. I didn't get an update. I've been pretty busy. Um, and that has to do with basically putting assets into the new system. And this is a process that with an asset-backed system, you have to go through where the assets have to be counted. They have to be inventoried. They have to be authenticated and... I don't know if anybody saw the uh, saw the zero hedge article this week. Did anybody see that about the Chinese gold bars? <laughs> that turned out to be I forget what they were. It wasn't tungsten, but that's the tungsten's kind of the go-to. They get tungsten and they wrap the tungsten in I don't know an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch of gold and pawn those off. And I think there was a story several years ago where. Hillary Clinton tried to pawn off a skid of gold-plated tungsten to the Chinese, and they found it. But uh, anyway, that is indicative of what's probably going on all over the world, because that gold or any of the assets like that have to be authenticated. So um, they're going to be they're going to be doing a lot of that, and I'm just wondering if that's what was going on over in China, and that's how they found it. But anyway, I just wanted to give you that information so you knew sort of what was going on. Big story today is the Maxwell arrest. Um, I looked at the indictment, and we'll kind of go through that here just real quick. There were six counts. Count one was conspiracy to entice minors to travel to engage in illegal sex acts. Um, count two this 46 page indictment count two enticement of a minor to travel to engage in illegal sex acts count three conspiracy to transport minors with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity count four transportation of a minor with intent to engage in criminal sexual activity and count five and count six were perjury now the interesting part about this is counts one through four i believe those offenses were committed between 1994 and 1997 the perjury charges were committed in 2016. so it covers a uh 20 years or so here and she was caught in I believe New Hampshire Connecticut somewhere up there in the Northeast on a uh, an estate that she paid cash for which was interesting and I saw a listing for that estate it I think it was listed for a million million um, 057 or something in change 
and she paid cash for it. And the inf the information that I saw indicated that that was done through some, well, I think it used the terms anonymous LLC. So she was trying to hide, hide that it was her and she had the cash to pay for it. So she was hiding out. They got her at 830. Uh, unlike the way they did it with Roger Stone, which they had the CNN crew there and, you know, 20 agents armed and got him up at, I don't know, four or five o'clock in the morning while it was still dark and filmed it. So anyway, that is, that is going to be the start of things. And I know we've, over the months, we've talked about some things that are going to come down in the future. And I know that July was a big month, so uh, this could be the start, July 2nd. And I think the the firing, and I, his name escapes me, the firing of the um, prosecutor for the Southern District of New York, which happened a couple of weeks ago. And if you recall, um, I think Barr, the Justice of, uh, uh, Department, announced that he was fired, and then he came out and said, no, I'm not fired, I'm still here, and the the uh, I think uh, the appellate court or the circuit court judge that appointed him has to isn't the only one that can get rid of him. I don't know if you guys remember that story. It was about two two weeks ago, I believe. Anyway, um, sometimes you got to get these guys out of the way before you can do things. Now, the Southern District New of New York is also where um, Anthony Weiner's laptop ended up. So. We could be seeing, this could be the first, well, I think it is going to be the first of a lot of uh, investigation and indictments. And they've obviously been tracking um, Maxwell, because uh, I read something where it said they were, they had been keeping tabs on her for quite some time. So they knew they were going to eventually do this at some point. They had, a, I think this is a grand jury indictment, which means the um, grand jury may have been interrupted for a time because of the COVID situation and the quarantines. And uh, I know that, I forget who was interviewing Barr a few weeks ago, and Barr alluded to that, that some of that had been delayed due to the social distancing and the reluctance of some of the jurors to come in. So they've obviously resumed that. And I'm thinking that this prosecutor that they had to fire, um, the grand jury came back with an indictment and maybe the prosecutor just refused to follow up. So they got rid of him. And um, so that's the result of that. So anyway, I think um, I think that's a good thing. I think everybody has been, I know I have been waiting for, to see um, some arrests. And so this is going to be the first one. Now, interesting, I think you got to look at this, that they could have just let this go, this Epstein thing go. And I think in normal circumstances, well, I think that's what they did the first time they arrested him, slapped him on the wrist, made him register as a sex offender, you know, spent his, his sentence, you know, on house arrest or whatever it was, and then basically let him just let him go on. So I think with them pursuing this with Maxwell, uh, it looks like they're going to try to get to the bottom of it. And of course, we've heard the uh, information. And I think the uh, prosecutor who did the news conference today even indicated that they're trying to get Prince Andy to cooperate. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that. But I talked to one of our co contacts in the UK today, and uh, they said that, you know, MI6 may give him up if if uh, the FBI presses it. So I guess that's that remains to be seen. I don't know. They're making it sound like they want to talk with him. Um, like it's, you know, they want to get information out of him. But believe me, it's not about getting information out of him. They're going to try to get him to admit to something that's illegal. And then they'll slap the cuffs on him right then and there. That's the way they do it. So anyway, we'll follow that and see how that goes. But I think this is going to be the start of some uh, some very interesting times. If they're into the Wiener laptop, that means that they're into the Clinton Foundation. And I know there's been some information that's surfaced today about the um, IG's report. Uh, not sure when that when that particular IG's report came out. I think it was Horowitz. It may have been the first one. Um, 
the first one of the two. The second one had to do with, uh, you know, this was the controversial one where Horowitz found that there was no bias, but he cited, I think, 21 issues or 17 or something like that. But I think in the first IG report that was done a few, maybe two years ago, there was a reference in there to the Clinton Foundation and the Wiener laptop. So that's kind of resurfaced a little bit in in some of the posts and some of the stuff that's been talked about today in relation to Maxwell. So that could lead to other people, and I think it will. Now, before a few a few minutes before we came on, I was listening to um, I was on the Michael Moore website, True Pundit. He was interviewing a victim of Bill Clinton. Um, and I don't know, you guys can go to True Pundit and find that interview. It's I think it's about 32 minutes. It's pretty disheartening. Um, I think the victim is is now 26 or, or was 26 when the interview was done. I really don't know when the interview was done. I think it was recent. Uh, I don't know how recent. But anyway, um, the victim talks about and his face is blanked out and his his uh, his voice has been modulated so you can't recognize his voice. But anyway, he describes the start of this abuse uh, when he was eight years old. So if you can stomach 30 minutes of listening to this kind of stuff, you can go to True Pundit and, and find that interview. Um, this information, according to Moore, other, uh, also known as Thomas Paine, has been given to the FBI. So, you know, once the floodgates get opened, um, we could see we could see a ton of arrests coming down in the next few weeks or few months. And like I say, uh, July was supposed to be a big month and it's only the second and we've already seen this. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Now in the Discord, I got asked this question this week because there's been a lot of information out there about McCabe and Comey and Brennan and Clapper and uh, Page and Strzok and Rosenstein um, being arrested, some of them, and even Obama and Big Mike, you know, being arrested, taken to get Mo executed, all this kind of stuff. And I <clears throat> wanted to know what I thought or if I knew anything about it. And the answer is I do not. However, I know one or one or two of our guys, I know one guy for sure is involved in some of these arrests, but he, it's so tight that he is not even sharing his information with the group. So um, the best that we could get out of him was there's some names that you'll know. So it's going on, but I don't know if it's politicians. I don't know if it's business people. I don't know if it's Hollywood people or entertainment people. I, I don't know. But that's how tight it is. Um, so anyway, I, I just wanted to put that out there because someone in the Discord asked me that question. And so uh, I did answer it. But And there are some things that I get that they say you can't put this out in public. But this was something that I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, they none of us can get anything out of them other than we're doing it. It's happening. But we can't tell you who it is. So, um that's we'll put that out there for what it's what it's worth um as far as i know on the financial system it's still a go it's going to take some time to propagate the system with um turning or accounting for the assets and then um basically uh, turning them into cash or currency and um putting money in the system, putting money into the accounts that's going to support the system once it gets up and going. So don't worry about Trump. Uh, you know, he's been talking about a second stimulus even being better than the first. Don't worry about it because the Federal Reserve is going to eat all of this. They're going to eat it. Um, so it's not going to it's not going to create any issues. And by the way, I did hear a. I guess I can put this out there. I did hear that there was a trust that was set up this week in a Western state regarding some two guys that 
were in the military. One used to be a joint chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Another one is, uh, if you're in the Dinar world, you may have heard of him, a Navy guy. <laughs> they started a trust this week. So um, if I tell you the name of the trust, you're going to start. It's going to start down the Nassar road. So I'll withhold that information. But anyway, there was a trust established. And we were told a few years ago um, that the redemptions or the the uh, conversion of the dinar, the revival of the dinar was going to be part of the um, funding for the new system. So it, it looks, it's starting to look more and more like that's going to turn out to be true. Ah, big drink of water. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, so everything looks good on that front. We are uh, coming up on July 15th, which is the new date to file federal income taxes. Now, Trump has been talking about um, doing away with the um, the withholding, which is basically if you're, you know, if you have a job and you get your, your weekly or bi-weekly or semi-monthly or monthly paycheck. Um, you know, they withhold federal taxes, they withhold FICA, they withhold state if you're in a state that they that has income taxes. And so he's talking about doing away with the federal withholding. So if he does away with the federal withholding, that virtually destroys the IRS because that's the money that all the companies withhold from your taxes and pay to the government on a monthly or quarterly basis. So um, if that goes away, I don't see how the IRS can stay afloat. <clears throat> so anyway, look for some sort of an announcement coming up. He's either going to have to extend it or just do away with it. And um, some people have asked, well, you know, what if I'm getting a refund? Well, if you're getting a refund, file your taxes for sure. They'll send you your refund. If you owe then I would just hang on to um, hang on to your tax return and file it. Um, you know, if, if the 15th of July is still the good date, then hang on to it till the 15th of July and, and file it then. Um, and, you know, if Trump suspends it and says we don't have to pay taxes anymore on a federal basis, then uh, you'll save yourself some money. Okay. Um, All right, so Lady Justice has arrived, finally. So um, you want to say hello and good evening to all the good folks out there? Hello and good evening to all the good folks out there. I oh, hope boy. you're having a lovely evening. <laughs> um, I hope your evening is better than mine. Well, it's nice of so. you to join us tonight. I'm well, gone. I apologize for my delay. I'm having, I'm not sure I'd love to know in the chat if anyone else is, is experiencing this. I have no internet. Um, everything's down. And I cannot seem to get reliable data service um, when I'm in my house. So I'm currently out of my house just so I can be, just so I can log in here and have a conversation with you because I can't seem to get any reliable service right now so I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing that or not but uh, if I should be thankful for it sometimes you know but yeah. tonight was not one of those nights <laughs> I was not <laughs> thankful for it well I've had Especially some spotty. because I, I had this wonderful speech prepared for um, our day of uh, our Lee resolution day today of July 2nd which is our actual day of freedom. And uh, I wasn't going to drag my laptop out here in the car with me. So I'm going to have to wing it. <laughs> well, good, because I, 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 I said, I'm not sure you're going to be here. Hopefully you will be. And this is really actually July 2nd is really our Independence Day. And Lady Justice will be talking about that if she's able to be here. So... Um, you're here. Uh, go for it. 
Well, I'm going to summarize. I'm not sure who's familiar with um, with the Lee resolution. The Lee resolution was the uh, document that was submitted to Congress that was actually submitted to Congress initially on June 7th of 1776, and it was voted on and voted in um, on July 2nd, 70, uh, 1776. Um, and it was submitted uh, by Richard Henry Lee of Virginia. And that was the document, documentation that declared the United Colonies are um, free and independent states and that they should be absolved from any allegiance to the British Crown. So I feel that the Lee Resolution is overlooked in our celebration of, of our Independence Day. Um, however, it was determined and this is the part I'm going to have to completely wing because I had it all written out. Uh, but they needed to have an official document to um, give to the public uh, or explain the move to the public. So they proposed um, in by the Committee of Five, which was Adams, Sherman, Livingston, Franklin, and Jefferson. And uh, that took two days um, for edits to be agreed upon. So then it was officially declared uh, the Independence Day by the Declaration of Independence document, which is why it's the Declaration of Independence, on July 4th. Um, so that is uh, how we determined it to be July 4th. And uh, so we had the, we had the, uh, we had a, a, a Federalist and um, a Republic uh, battle that went on for a couple of years as far as um, how to celebrate the Declaration. And the Federalist side was John Adams, the Republican side was the Thomas Jefferson side, um, and that the Declaration uh, for the Anniversary Day wouldn't, were, weren't widely celebrated until, it wasn't widely celebrated until the Federalists faded away, and that was around 1812. Um, but there was a letter written by Thomas Jefferson in 1826 I believe it was the last letter he ever wrote. I'm going by memory here. Um, but he had written, For ourselves, let the annual return of this day forever refresh our re recollections of these rights and an undiminished devotion to them. Uh, he and Adams then passed away two days later, on July 4th. Isn't that an amazing story? Wow, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, so I felt that it was a great day, July 2nd, our, independ our independence, uh, uh, or a day of freedom, our, our resolution of freedom today. And it was a great way to start it with the, uh, with the news of a uh, big arrest. And I know you covered that, but I uh, think that this was a great way to start the day. So I personally am I'm struggling myself right now. I'm... I'm very much excited to celebrate the freedom of this country, but right now I am struggling um, internally with the amount of sacrifice I see happening with those freedoms. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to find a balance, I guess you could say right now, especially because I see this ramping up again. I'm sure you saw the super PAC that was um, recently uh, organized, I think Q did a post on it even, um, of the 43 prominent officials from the Bush administration organizing their super PAC to aggressively go back, you know, go back after the White House. Because the gentleman who currently holds office there just doesn't, you know, isn't distinguished enough to, um, you know, keep their lies and corruption and bullshit going for the next 100 years of our lives. So, you know, I am, um, I'm in a state of, of uh, I'm being pulled in, in different directions on how to, how to, how to celebrate our freedoms and, and uh, how to handle this, this debacle of how I see our freedoms being trampled on more and more every day. So I'm in a little bit of a mood about it today. I don't know if you can tell. Well, does that does that mean you're not going to mask up? I am not a mask hole. That is not <laughs> happening. 
you can you can count on that. This face will not. This face is too pretty for a mask. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's get right down to it. Well, ah, this was yeah. grocery day for me, so I was real cognizant because our governor came out uh, yesterday and take took us to stage 4.5 which is a made up stage that only he could come up with and proceeded then to spend about 15 or 20 minutes uh stumping for everybody needs to wear a mask but of course it's re recommended and not required so today was grocery day so i was really cognizant of how many people we're wearing a mask and it seemed to be percentage wise about the same as it has been for the last few weeks. And that's anywhere from, I'd say 60 to 75%. Um, there was one, one person that I saw and I said, where's your mask young man. And he said the same place yours is. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good yeah. answer. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, there was a young female at the uh, deli waiting to be waited on while I was getting my my stuff in. Uh, I turned to her. She didn't have a mask on, and I asked her the same question, and she kind of gave me a, a funny look. Um, I guess maybe she thought I this old man was hitting on her, so I kind of, kind of, you know, I said, I guess it's the same place mine is. Huh? And she said, oh, yeah. Then she kind of smiled. So so anyway, there were, I guess, the same. I didn't see an increase in the percentage wise. I didn't see an increase um, in the mask wearing. And it was interesting because I go we actually go to two different grocery stores. One is sort of a main grocery store and, you know, the big box kind of thing. And then the other one is an organic market so um it's interesting that i noticed as we were walking in and people were walking out about half of the people who were walking out who were wearing wearing masks would would take the mask off as soon as they got outside the door so um uh you know it's it's not it's not going over well i don't think it's going to go over well and i think the more that we see various places i think a couple of counties maybe in southern florida their mayors came out and said they had to wear masks and there's getting pushed back so i think there's going to be there's going to be a lot of pushback and i'm thinking about putting a putting a, a well, sign I'll tell you, up I mean, my recently, front door. Uh, i saw a couple of articles that claimed that there were only five states in the entire country that didn't have some sort of mass requirement whether that was a local municipality or the entire state. I saw today that Texas, and I know there are Texas people in the chat, so they can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I saw that Texas uh, mandated masks today, and they reduced the uh, the group, you know, the gatherings down to 10 again. Um, you know, I've, I've uh, seen some ramping up on the masks. I've actually, even in my own area, which I'm in, one of those five states that has no mask requirement whatsoever, um, but I I was very disappointed when I went out today to see a lot more masks than I have seen probably the entire time this has been going on. Oh boy! And in in, uh, in my area, that was very disappointing to see. I do on the flip side of that. Um, I don't know if we have any Nebraskans in the. Uh, I don't know if that's how you would say that, but you know, Nebraska people in the chat. Um, I have to give props to that governor who uh, who basically said he wanted to ban masks and that any municipality, local municipality that is trying to enforce enforce the mask order in their area, he would be um, pulling their funding. They would get no state funding for anything if they decided to try and um, enforce uh, masks. And I thought that was, uh, you know, amazing. I mean, noble, noble, yeah. Yes, very noble, and and uh, you know a leadership move in this time, and uh, and then I will say that my governor, who was in a who was at a some sort of gathering in uh, the northern part of my state, 
um, there were some Black Lives Matters uh, protesters that decided to drive up there and and uh, protest her engagement and um, made the silly move of deciding to step in front of a government vehicle motorcade and she just plowed right over them. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to chuckle on that, but um, you know, the last thing, the last vehicle you probably want to try and stand in front of is an official government vehicle. Um, and the, uh, the statement from the person that was hit was, I believe, I, I firmly believe that uh, they did it on purpose. I don't know if she did it on purpose or not, but um, I'll say that she still have my respect if she did. And just to be clear, it was her bodyguard that was driving the vehicle, correct? Right. Well, her driver, yeah, bodyguard, okay. yes. Her, yeah, her okay. entourage, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you do not stand in front of a government vehicle. I mean, they don't know if it's an assassination attempt, if you're trying to threaten the governor's life. I mean, that is just, that is really a dumb move on anybody's part. So, you know, for you, for you uh, viewers out there, there that sit in the background don't don't try that at home boys and girls that's a bad idea 